Welcome back. It has been a little minute since I have filmed anything. It's been actually a couple of weeks since I even touched the camera. So I apologize for my absence. Work has been a little bit more intense than I had anticipated in the lead up to going away and the wedding. So consequently, filming has sort of fallen down the priority list. I'm sure you understand. Anyway, today uh, I'm doing a little bit of a, an easy video to get myself back into it because um, some of the videos that I do, particularly where I'm you know, really giving an analysis of a perfume that I've been sampling or something like that, they do require quite a bit of time to sample things, obviously, but then they also require quite a bit of attention and thought. And I'm afraid I just don't have that mental bandwidth at the moment to do those types of videos. So over the next few weeks, you might find that the videos are a little bit more fun and less serious. And let's face it, perfume is not that serious anyway, unless you're a perfume maker. So let's just enjoy what we have. So we're a week into August now, which means we're about three weeks away from spring officially. And I thought now might be a good time to reflect on the things that I wore the most over winter. Some of these probably won't be a surprise to you, but then there are some that I expected to be in here in this list that did not end up in this list because I just didn't reach for them as much as I thought I would. So stay tuned to find out what I wore. So as usual, I have quite a few in this list. I probably won't go into too much detail about each and every one of them because I think I have spoken about every perfume in here previously or in previous videos. However, also given that there's a few, I don't want to go on too much about them because this video will get very, very long. All right, so first up out of the gate is a fragrance that I think I have spoken about previously on this channel, but uh, when I spoke about it, it was a brand new bottle and now it has quite a sizable dent in it. This is Blondine by Fressai. So this fragrance is primarily a lily fragrance. It's very soft in the wear, but it's not weak by any means. Uh, it has really good longevity on me. It doesn't necessarily project a whole heap or for an extended amount of time. Uh, but there's also a suede note in here. And so it does have this sort of fluffy, suede leathery tone to it. Um, but it also has a hint of sweetness and also those beautiful florals in there as well. This one smells very whimsical to me. And whenever I smell it, I get the image of a lavender colored powder. That is Blondine by Fressai. This was probably a surprise that I wore this so much in wintertime because it is so light and airy in the wear that I kind of thought this would be more of a springtime fragrance for me but it just worked really well in the winter time. And I really thought I was going to wear the other Frasai perfume that I have, which I've talked about quite a bit, Victoria, because that's a lot heavier and a lot more woody. And I think probably a lot more suited to the colder months than this. But for some reason, this was the one I wanted to wear. So, so you can see I did put a little bit of a dent in it. So the Frasai bottles are doing very well in my wardrobe in the year of 2023. This is obviously the brand of the year for me. Next up is a fairly new fragrance in my wardrobe. So I don't have that much of a dent in it or anything, but this is Paris Paris by Chanel. This is part of their Les O line. And I really, really enjoy this. I was surprised how much I really liked this. Now this one does remind me quite a bit of another fragrance that I already own. So with that in mind, I probably shouldn't have bought it. However, the reason why I ended up deciding to get this one was because the other perfume that I own, which is similar, which is Gris Chanel by Dior, that one has um, oak moss and patchouli in it. And I think the patchouli in that is very dominant. Whereas this one is more centered around the rose. The, it still has this earthy tone to it, but this one feels a lot more easy wearing, less sharp, and I guess maybe has a bit of a slightly fruity element to it as well. So it just makes it a very pleasant wear. I mean, I love Gris Dior as well, 
but there's just something about this. It's different enough, I think, for me to warrant owning both, but they do remind me of each other quite a bit as well. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably won't be surprised by this next one. This is Guidance by Amouage. Yes, I did upgrade to the full bottle. I went through quite a few samples of this, I think three, but they're the, the Amouage sized ones. So they were quite substantial. Uh, I think they might be a deluxe size. So uh, it's more than the sort of 1.5 to 2 mil that you normally get. Um, yeah, I was surprised to end up with this one in my wardrobe because this one is very strong. It does have this creamy fruitiness to it, which when I first smelled it, I did not like. And hence why I'm so surprised that I ended up really falling for this fragrance. Because it, when I first tried it, it, those elements really clashed on me and I just thought this is all wrong. But as I made my way through a sample of it and, and got a few wears under my belt, I really started to appreciate the frankincense in here. Um, to me, this is mostly frankincense now. It's just how my brain perceives this fragrance now that I've worn it quite a bit. And I know that a lot of people don't necessarily describe it that way. Yes, it does have the fruits. Yes, it does have that nutty creaminess to it as well. But to me, I get a lot of the frankincense. It's not smoky frankincense. It's more a resinous frankincense. And I think it's very stunning. I do wish that this came in smaller bottles because I can't see myself ever getting through 100 ml of this because it is so powerful and I only need a couple of sprays when I wear it. But I have been wearing this a lot and I've been really appreciating it. So there you go. Surprise addition to the wardrobe this year is Guidance by Amouage. Now, every winter I always end up reaching for Shalimar at some point. And this year I was surprised that I didn't reach for the Shalimar Eau de Parfum as much as I have done in previous years. This year, I really gravitated towards the Millicene Tonka. Now this bottle was very, very generously purchased by a friend of mine on Instagram. And she was worried that I would miss out on this because when it was launched, I was doing a no buy year. And she was right, if I had waited until the end of the year to try and get this, it would have been a lot harder. Although I, I think since then I've seen it pop up in the Facebook groups uh, secondhand. So um, some people have been selling these bottles, but obviously I didn't need to purchase them because I already had a bottle. So Gail, I'm so, so grateful that you bought this for me because I have been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. And as you can see, I'm almost halfway through. I will be, I'll be sad when this has disappeared and maybe one day, hopefully, Guerlain will release these limited edition Shalimars as, as part of their more permanent line. Oh, but I really do love this one. So this is obviously Tonka heavy and the Tonka in here comes off a little bit cherry-like actually. So again, a surprise that I would appreciate it as much as I do, given I'm not normally one who appreciates a cherry note or a cherry aesthetic in my perfume, but this one is just beautiful and it's so easy to wear. Uh, I really can't fault it. It's super cozy and I just, I've been wearing it a lot. The next fragrance may not be much of a surprise for you, given how much I went on and on and on about it last year when I couldn't buy it. And then I finally got around to buying it. So unsur unsurprisingly, I wore it quite a bit over winter. This is Precious Forest by Keiko Macheri. This is an earthy, woody orris fragrance, but it also has a green element running through it, which doesn't smell grassy. It probably leans a little bit more mossy perhaps, but at the same time, it doesn't smell like oak moss or anything. It just, it's really hard to explain, but it has this green element running through it. And it really blends in so beautifully with the orris and the woods and the earthy tones. And that green element is very softened by those other elements. So it doesn't feel sharp or crisp like you would normally associate with uh, a green perfume. So that is Precious Forest by Keiko Macheri. These are in no particular order, by the way. I just realized that you might be thinking I've 
ordered these in terms of how much I've worn them. I haven't. This is just totally, I'm just randomly picking them out of a box. <laughs> okay, now the next one is one that I was surprised that I wore as much as I did. This bottle was new this year. I bought it because I had a gift voucher from work for a department store. And it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to get with it because there weren't many fragrances in the department store that I particularly wanted to buy because I wanted something that didn't require me to pay extra over the top. So the price of whatever I bought had to be within the constraints of the value of the gift voucher that I had. But at the same time, that sort of did limit me to sort of the designer realm. And I'm not a designer snob by any means. I do have a lot of designer fragrances in my wardrobe as well, but it did take me a while to sort of narrow down exactly what I wanted to get. Uh, so I ended up buying Musk Noir by Narciso Rodriguez. And it is the big bottle, as you can see. So this is a 100 ml bottle. And I have worn that much of a 100 ml bottle just this year. I mean, granted, this is, I would say, fairly light wearing, so you can get away with spraying a bit more. But I have worn this uh, as a base under other perfumes. It is a typical Narciso Rodriguez mask, but it's very soft and it's got a leathery bent to it, which is distinctive from a lot of the other Narciso Rodriguez fragrances, which tend to be either lean more floral uh, or laundry clean. So this one is a lot softer. It has a bit more of a darkness to it. In fact, I think this is, yeah, it's Musk Noir. Did it, is that what I said? Is that what I called it? Not the Musk Noir Rose. This one is much less sweet than that. And as I said, a little bit more leathery leaning. So yeah, I this has been a, a really great workhorse in my wardrobe and I've really enjoyed wearing this over the winter and I fully anticipate I will continue to wear it during the spring and summer. The next one is one that I wore probably more in autumn and through the beginning of winter. And I have slowed down on it in the last few weeks, but still worthy of a mention because again, I did wear it quite a bit. This is Iris Prima by Penhaligans. Um, most of this dent was actually made this year, so I have worn it quite a bit. This is a very suede, um, buttery, leathery sort of fragrance that obviously is centered around Iris hence the name, although we can't always assume anything from names of perfumes these days. Uh, but this is quite orris heavy. It's a very light, airy sort of fragrance. It smells pink. The inspiration for this fragrance was ballerinas. So that probably doesn't surprise one to think that it sort of smells pink, but I do think it has some pink or red fruits in the note profile, which obviously helps to give that impression. Uh, it's a really beautiful fragrance, very light wearing. Uh, it doesn't have great longevity or projection, but I still really love it. And I mostly wear it just for me anyway. It is sadly discontinued though, so difficult to get hold of. Uh, but you know, if it sounds good to you, then just keep your eyes peeled in the, uh, the secondhand perfume market, I guess. Next up is one that you would not describe as a wintry perfume at all, but is one that I have thoroughly enjoyed wearing over the winter months. I only really discovered this a few weeks ago, so mostly I've been wearing this perfume in the sort of mid to later end of winter. And this is Le Jardin de Monsieur Lee. This is from the Hermes Jardin line. And I did just talk about this in my last video, so I won't go on about it too much but it's a really citrusy, fresh fragrance that also has a slight greenness to it. Uh, I just find it incredibly refreshing. So this is great for days when, you know, you've been holed up inside for, you know, a few days at a time because it's been so cold and you just feel really stuffy. This is a really great one to just feel like you've opened a window and let the fresh air in. Next up is actually a new bottle to my collection, but I have been through a few travel sizes of this and I still have one more travel size of it, but I, I have that earmarked to gift on to somebody else. Anyway, so this is Taif by Ormond Jane. I just bought the little 30 ml bottle. Um, Ormond Jane have recently, I, I can't remember if I've mentioned this in a previous video or not, but Ormond Jane have recently 
post-pandemic have been shipping to Australia directly. And I think as a standard offering, they ship the 30 ml bottles for free. So there's no shipping costs associated with the 30 ml bottles, which I think is outstanding, particularly for international shipping to Australia, because we just always get lugged with huge shipping costs over here. So super, super grateful for Almond Jane to do that for us Aussies. I think they do it for you know shipping anywhere internationally, but I don't know, I just feel like Australia uh, really feels it and has always really felt it in terms of shipping costs. I know that it's, you know, the Europeans and the British are sort of starting to feel that as well because they now have to pay all these import taxes and stuff if they're shipping um, from the EU through to the UK or vice versa. Anyway, so this is a really fresh, sort of spicy, slightly green leaning uh, rose fragrance. What I like about this one is that I don't really gravitate towards a lot of green rose fragrances. I find rose can be quite sharp and piercing for me and headache inducing when it has that green sort of bent to the fragrance. Whereas this one uh, doesn't do that. It's just really sparkly and bright and gorgeous. I just love it. And I'm really, really happy to have this 30 ml bottle in my wardrobe now, particularly in light of the fact that spring is just around the corner. Next up is Lanta de Rouge. This was a kind of a surprise purchase for me, actually. I didn't really expect to enjoy it that much. And the reason why it's a surprise is because when the Lanta de line was relaunched back in, was it 2017 or 2018 or something, I just found it to be very sweet <laughs> way too sweet for me and um, i didn't really gravitate towards it and then when i made a purchase from sephora of some skincare i don't know if they had a promotion going or something but i ended up with a sort of travel size 10 ml of the lanta de eau de parfum perfume in a roller ball so it's kind of like the oil i guess at first I tried it and just went, whoa, that's way too sweet. Still, you still can't wear it, put it aside. And then I don't know why, but uh, several months later, I, I dug it out. All of a sudden I started wearing it and Matt really liked it because Matt likes the sweet ones on me. And yeah, so I just started wearing the rollerball, you know, in the evenings when I was walking the dog and stuff or just putting a little bit on before bed. And I, I, it kind of grew on me, the scent profile grew on me. And then I was in store one day and I tried the Rouge and I just really enjoyed this one more than the Eau de Parfum because it has this ginger element to it. So it's a little bit more spicy. It's got a little bit of heat in there. Uh, it, it feels a bit more nighttime and I just really enjoy it. So that is why I picked that one up. And yeah, most of the time I haven't worn this out. I mostly just wear this uh, when I want to take the dog for a walk or something like that. And it, because it is quite strong, I just spritz it on my abdomen underneath my jumpers and things and then it just sort of gently filters up around me and I really enjoy it. So that is Lanta de Rouge. It'll probably take me forever to get through this 50ml bottle because I only spritz it once or twice when I wear it. Um, but a worthy addition to my perfume wardrobe in 2023. Next up is another Ormond Jane fragrance and it's not the one you think I'm going to talk about. This is a little travel size of Privé. I did mention this, I think in my wedding perfumes video, um, I was considering perhaps wearing this as a wedding scent. I have since changed my mind on that. I do still really love this one, as you can probably tell, because I've been through half a travel size of it. But I, I have moved away from thinking of wearing it as a wedding scent, just because there is a point in the wear it usually comes in at about maybe the 15, 20 minute mark. And I think, I don't know if it's cumin or there's some kind of spice in here that does sort of go a little bit challenging on me. And it lasts for probably about half an hour before it softens again and the florals and the sort of ambery tones take over. But that was enough to turn me off wearing it as a wedding perfume. Because if I was to spritz it all over, as I intend to do on my wedding day to make sure that I smell great all day long. I just feel like those challenging elements might overwhelm me and make me regret my choice. So for, for a wedding perfume, no, 
but still love this, still wearing it regularly. I do still have a couple of travel sizes of this left, so plenty of time to continue to enjoy it. Third last, <laughs> we're nearly at the end. If you have been enjoying this so far, please do consider giving this a thumbs up or subscribing if you have not already. This is Daylight Seduction by Motel Paradise. Motel Paradise is a little indie or artisanal perfume house based out of Sydney. It's just one guy. And when I bought this, it was very reasonably priced too. I mean, I think they're all still reasonably priced. This is a 50 ml bottle and I think I paid $60 for it. I think at the time there might've also been a bit of a sale on or there was some kind of promotion that I think I got 20% off. And then I know that after I purchased this bottle, he increased his prices recently, but I think they're still fairly affordable, maybe around the $100 mark. It's not a groundbreaking perfume by any means. It's basically a really lovely rose water scent. And I've been obsessed with rose water lately. And I don't know, I've just been wanting to bathe myself in this basically for the last few months. And again, it's that thing of, you know, feeling really stuffy in winter because you're wearing all these layers and you feel a bit claustrophobic. And this just makes me feel like my lungs have opened and I just really enjoy wearing it. So I've been wearing it to the gym. I've been wearing it for walking the dog. Um, I spritz a bit on in the afternoon if I'm feeling a little bit flat. Uh, it's just a really lovely one for that pleasant scent to wear. And you can see um, I have well and truly gone past the halfway mark on this one. So that is Daylight Seduction by Motel Paradise. The last two I will talk about together. Potentially there could have been three in this section, but I left one out because I didn't actually wear it that much. Basically, um, my love of orange blossom used to be really strong and then it really waned for a couple of years between 2021 and 2022. And at that time, I really didn't gravitate towards my orange blossom fragrances at all. And then I don't know what's happened, but this year can't get enough orange blossom. Just absolutely loving it. Again, a really great one to wear in the winter because they usually are fairly powerful. You know, they last a long time, but they also just have this really spring, fresh, summery, bright nature to them. And so what I have been wearing a lot this winter is Neroli Oranger by Mathieu Premier. This is a really fantastic orange blossom fragrance. It's not overcomplicated. If you don't like neroli or orange blossom, you probably definitely won't like this one, but it smells very similar to a lot of old school orange blossom fragrances. It's just very simple, very clean and, you know, very feminine. And I just really enjoy it. And what I do really like about this one is it does feel very elegant in the wear. So it doesn't actually feel old school or dated or anything. Uh, it's still got that sparkly modern tone to it, but at the same time, it's very characteristically orange blossom. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just happy to be back in the orange blossom game because it was kind of weird. I, I was not enjoying orange blossom, but I wanted to be enjoying orange blossom because I used to love orange blossom so much. Uh, so that is Neroli Oranger by Mattia Premier. I've almost finished this little six mil vial. So I probably will upgrade. Maybe I'll just get another six mil and just continue to wear through these. It's fantastic that they offer this. Continuing on in the orange blossom vein, I have also been wearing this Eau de Sans Eau de Sans from Diptyque. I don't know if I said that correctly, by the way. I don't know if it's Eau de Sans or Eau de Sens or something. This one is also orange blossom, but I don't enjoy this one quite as much. This one comes off a little bit, I want to say Play-Doh-y, but I'm not sure it's Play-Doh, it, but it does, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the smell of kindergarten and preschool classrooms where they use a lot of that um, sort of non-toxic glue, the CLAG glue. Does, is CLAG glue a, an international thing or is it an Australian thing? I don't know. And they've got all their paintings up and their little paper mache things and it has that distinctive smell. This is kind of what it reminds me of, but it also has that orange blossom floral element to it as well. But there is just that undertone of Play-Doh or clag glue that I can't quite get past. It feels quite thick in the fragrance and yeah, I don't know. I just, mm, 
I want to love it because it is diptyque and I do really appreciate diptyque fragrances, but I have to confess I don't really love this one. But I have been sort of trying to get to know it and understand it. Um, I'm not even halfway through this. I think it's a 10 mil size and I think I'm done with it. I think I'll, I'll give this one on. And the other orange blossom fragrance that I could have mentioned was Solar Blossom by Mizensia. I love that one as well. Very bright and sparkly and also quite puffy and marshmallowy. But in all honesty, I really did gravitate towards the Matier Premier one this winter just because it's less vanillic. It doesn't have the Play-Doh-y vibe of this one um, and it's much more clean and fresh. <laughs> So notable absences from this list. The one that is bleeding obvious is um, Ormond Woman by Ormond Jane. That's not to say that I didn't wear Woman over the winter. I did. I wore it quite a bit. But I just didn't wear it as much as Taif or Privé. Um, I also thought I might wear Tolu more this winter, which I did not. And I don't know why, but I just really wasn't gravitating towards very spicy or very ambery fragrances this winter. I just wasn't feeling the vibe. I just wanted florals and I wanted freshness and airiness. And um, I, I think I also was enjoying quite a lot, of, lot more Oris and leather this winter, even though I love Oris anyway. But I tend to wear Oris and Iris more in the brighter months. The other noticeable absentees from the list were Beloved Woman and Memoir Woman from Amouage, both very highly regarded by myself, both fragrances that I would normally wear quite a bit of in the winter time, and I didn't really reach for them at all. Now, I don't think not reaching for them was a, really a conscious decision. It was more about I had a new Amouage in my closet, and that's the one that I was reaching for the most, purely just because it was new and fresh and exciting. Um, but I did wear Beloved last week and was instantly reminded that that really is a stunning fragrance. And arguably that is more me than Guidance is, but there is just something about Guidance. There just is. I don't know. Can't explain it. Delina Exclusive. Normally I would wear that a lot at home in the evenings uh, and on the weekends and I really didn't touch it at all this winter. So I wore La Rose quite a lot over the spring and summer so perhaps by the time winter came around I had just had my fill of the Delina profile and therefore the exclusive was shunted to the back but yeah, I was surprised. I thought that I would wear that more because I thought I was looking forward to wearing that one. Ooh La La by Theo Cabanel is another one that I thought I would wear more over the winter. Uh, that is a really beautiful sandalwood fragrance that has, I think, a hazelnut note in it. Um, it's quite puffy and powdery, if I recall correctly, and I really prefer it on cold days. It's, it, I find it, it can be a little bit choky sometimes in the heat. And, and maybe the reason why I wore the things that I wore this winter was because perhaps our winter wasn't as cold this year as it has been in previous years. I can't tell you, I haven't actually checked the facts of the weather, but I, I really just didn't want to wear heavy fragrances. And that one, whilst absolutely stunning. It does feel heavy when you wear it. It's not super loud, but I, I do feel like there's a denseness to it that obviously I wasn't gravitating towards this winter. So moving on, Cherie. Bengal Rouge by Papillon Parfums. I don't know why I didn't wear that one. I totally could wear it. Maybe I'll wear it today. I think I just had it in a different section of my perfume cabinet that I don't normally reach down into and it therefore never saw the light of day. Um, but again, I guess it is an amber fragrance. So again, that's probably why I wasn't gravitating towards it, but um, I legitimately didn't really think about it either because it was sort of out of sight, out of mind, which is another timely reminder of why it might be a good idea to not <laughs> let your perfume wardrobe grow so large because 
you just don't wear the things that you don't see. And it's not because you don't like them, it's just literally you just don't think about them. And then the last not notable absentee on this list was number five by Chanel in any of its formats. I really didn't reach for any of them except for Low, which is a little bottle that lives in my gym bag. And after the gym, I sometimes spritz it on because if I'm going straight from the gym and stopping at the supermarket on my way home or something, I don't want to walk around the supermarket smelling like I've just been to the gym. So I might spritz on a little bit of low just to make sure that I'm smelling a little bit fresh and clean <laughs> as much as possible. So I didn't touch the Eau de Parfum, I didn't touch the Parfum and I didn't touch the Eau de Toilette over the winter. Again, it's not to say that because I didn't wear them, I don't like them. It's just, I either didn't think about them or they were just a style of perfumery that I just wasn't gravitating towards over the past few months. I'm still very much embedded in this fresh floral phase of my existence. So I'm just going with it and I'm enjoying it. Anyway, that was what I wore over winter. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go now. I've been talking for quite some time and Matt is now home from yoga. So we are going to go have some breakfast together and I'm going to get on with my day. I wish you all the best with yours and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. How are you doing? How was it? How much, how many classes did you do? I did two. A little different than all the rest. A quite old fashioned where I had sometimes played chess.